Today, I'm sizing up the Aperture 120D Mark II against the Godox SL60W to figure out which light is the best for you. First off, let me start by saying that this video is not sponsored and that I'm not here to convince you on which light is better than the other because every filmmaker needs is going to be different from yours or mine. These are both great lights and they both do great things. I've worked very closely with them for the last few months and know them both very well. And just so you know, this video is gonna be straight up, honest opinions, observations, and recommendations. It's not gonna be super technical. I don't even have all those gadgets to do that anyway. So the best way to compare these lights to each other is not based on the accessories that they have, what they offer or do not offer compared to each other, but rather keeping in mind that they are video lights and therefore it would be best for us to judge them based on how they perform as a video light. That gives them both the same playing field to say which one is a better video light and then we can look at the accessories and what they offer to determine if it's a good choice for us. So that's where we're going to start with a brightness test and then we'll move on to the accessories that each one come with and the pros and cons and which one I would recommend. So with this brightness test, the camera is set to the same exact settings for every single shot. And then each light is set next to each other and put at the same exact percentage of brightness to see how they look sized up next to each other. And here's what I found. So here in this first test, the lights are both at 10% brightness. And as you can see, the aperture light on the left is looking really weak, if not non-existent. The Godox light is really strong here. And I really like that in this light. Next up, they're both at 25% brightness. And as you can see, the Godox is still doing a little bit better than the aperture light as far as brightness is concerned. So here we are now at 50% brightness for both of these lights. They both seem to be looking closer to each other. I would say the Godox is still just slightly brighter than the aperture. So here we are at 75% brightness for both of these lights and it looks like they have equalized and they look very comparable to each other. And finally, we have 100% brightness and it looks like the aperture light is being a little bit brighter than the Godox light at full power. I wanna insert a little note here about the Godox light. It would appear that the Godox light has a small magenta tint to it, but it's very, very subtle and it's hardly noticeable. You can only see it because you have the aperture light right next to it. However, the aperture light seems to have a weird light shaping thing going on when it's at its fullest brightness. Looks like it has an extra ring around the edge, doesn't soften out completely. So it's just interesting to note these two little things about both of these lights. My comments about this light test would be that the Godox is a really great choice for a bright light throughout all of its brightness settings. However, if there is a situation where you just need a very small touch of light, you don't want it as strong, even at its lowest brightness level, then maybe the aperture is the light for you. So before we get much further into this video, I want to take a moment to mention heat temperature and fans. These are really important to both of these lights, and so I thought I might as well bring it up. Heat temperature is really important to figure out if your light is about to overheat and turn off suddenly. What I really like about the Godox light is that it actually does tell you what the temperature is at, either in Celsius or in Fahrenheit, you can choose which one. Aperture, on the other hand, does not. It has no settings whatsoever to figure out what the temperature of the light is at as far as heat goes, and so it's a little unknown as to if it'll overheat or not. I've never had a situation with either of them overheating, but it is something to mention because it is helpful to know how hot your light is getting. The second thing I wanna mention in these lights are the fans. I know that there's a lot of reviews out there on the Godox SL60W that says that their fans are really, really loud. I wanna let you know that within the last year, Godox has taken this into consideration and they have actually updated their fans and they are much quieter. And I can attest to this because I have two Godox lights. One seems to be a little bit of an older model and has a bit of a louder fan that you can hear more audibly. Whereas the second Godox light is much more silent. You'd really have to listen to hear it. This does not mean that the aperture fan is completely silent. You can still hear it. I would say it's about the same for both of them, but because I know this is a big issue, I decided to do a little bit of a fan test. Keeping in mind, I don't have the latest, greatest equipment to do this with, but I wanted to give you a feeling of what it's like to listen to all these fans. So I'm going to let you listen to all three of the lights, the aperture and then the two Godox that I have so that you can see the difference between the newer and the older model of the Godox and then the aperture as well. So here that is.
So now that we've listened to the fans, let's move on to the accessories of both of these lights. So starting off with the Godox SL60W, you can get this light for $140. You get the light, you get the Bowens mount reflector, you get one power cord, which is super heavy duty, and you get a remote. There are only four things that come in the box. It only comes in a box, it does not come with a case. Next up, we have the Aperture 120D Mark II. It comes with the light, it comes with the Bowens reflector, it comes with two power cords, it comes with a power pack control panel, you get the remote, and then you get the case for it all to come in. So there you have all the accessories that come with these two lights, as you can tell it seems like the aperture does come with a few more things and maybe that's why it costs six hundred dollars more however i personally don't believe that a case is worth six hundred dollars more but hey they do a really great job at branding and advertising their lights and i think that's why they're the more popular light it's just because they're more well known they look like they have a high quality brand feel to it whereas the Godox does not. Now we get to the fun part where we talk about the pros and cons of both of these lights. I'm gonna start with the Aperture 120D Mark II. I would say that the Aperture light is a little bit better if you're gonna plan on traveling often with your gear. It comes with a case and that's really awesome so that you can just grab it and go. It also has the ability to be run on battery power. So that's pretty cool as well. The aperture also comes with a fun lighting mode called paparazzi that you can use. It flashes the light a bunch. So that's pretty cool. However, I would say that the cons to this light is that it's a lot heavier of a light. It's pretty pricey. $745 is a lot of money. There's also an issue with the aperture light where the Bowens reflector isn't securely attached to the light. This is what it does. It shakes a bunch. That could be a really serious sound issue on set if someone jostles the light by accident and it makes a bunch of noise like that. Also something I found really tedious about the aperture is that it has so many cords that you have to plug in and get it all set up. It takes a whole lot longer to set up this light because of all the cords and all the equipment you need just to turn the light on. Also throughout the aperture's range of power, it's not very strong throughout. It's only at its strongest when it's at 100%. So I feel like this is a slight con to the light that you're not getting the strongest output of light that you possibly can from this really expensive light. And the remote that comes with the aperture light is great, but it doesn't come with an LCD screen or any indication of what the light setting is currently at. So you have to be looking at the actual light in order to figure out what the settings are at. And so the remote isn't very helpful in that way. So those are the pros and cons that I feel like are worth noting about the Aperture 120D Mark II. All right, next up we have the Godox SL60W. I would say some of the cons for this light is that it doesn't come with a case, it only comes in a box, and that it doesn't have an option to be run on battery power. There's also one little tiny um, annoyance is with the, the handle for tightening the light to keep it in its place. Sometimes it isn't the greatest, but you, you can replace that. I, I just feel like it's worth noting that it doesn't have the best handle for tightening. So the pros for the Godox SL60W is that it's lightweight, it's inexpensive, it has one cord, so it's super easy to set up, it's super fast to set up this light, it takes about 20 seconds or less. The remote that comes with the Godox light comes with an LCD screen on it so you can see what your settings are at. The con to this is that the remote isn't as fast as the aperture light, but I do enjoy the fact that I can tell what my settings are when I have the remote in my hand. The Godox also has a really great output of light, it's really strong throughout, and that's something I really appreciate about the light as well. Like I said at the start of this video, I'm not here to convince you on which light is better, but I will give you my opinion on the matter. My opinion of these two lights are that they both are great lights, but they each have a weakness or a strength in an area that the other one does not. The Godox light is really bright, lightweight, versatile, and inexpensive, whereas the Aperture might be a little bit more travel friendly because you can use the battery to power it instead, or you have a travel case that comes with it. There aren't huge differences between these two lights. They both are Bowens mounts, so if you have a diffuser dome that you wanna use on one, and then you buy the other, you can use it on that light as well because they have the same exact mounting. I would say the biggest difference in these two lights is that they're a big price difference. You could pay $140 for a light that does pretty much the same exact things as the $745 one, you can pay $600 more for this light and get a case and the ability to have a battery attached to it, or you can get this light and go out and buy yourself a case with all the money that you saved. Like I said, it all really depends on what your needs are and which one you'll choose. I choose the Godox light because I feel like it suits my needs the best right now where I'm at. Maybe down the road, I'll look at an aperture light, but right now I'm really enjoying the Godox light because it's offering me the same quality that the aperture light is providing. There's one last thing I would like to mention that doesn't necessarily have to do with these two lights, but it has to do with something that you could use for these two lights, and that would be a diffuser dome. These things are super helpful for lighting 
uh, subjects to make it a really soft look. It's a nice soft box. If you want to buy one, I would highly suggest getting the one from Aperture because they're easier to set up. So if you're traveling often and you need to take that light dome with you, it's really easy to break down and set up. Whereas the one that I bought was a really cheap version made by newer and it's just a bit of a hassle to put together and to take apart. So I highly suggest you go with the Aperture light dome versus maybe a cheaper option. Unless you don't care about taking it down very often, then it's okay to get this other dome. So with the Godox, you can get a complete lighting setup for right around $300, where if you wanna get a complete lighting setup with the Aperture, you're looking to spend right around eight to 950 for that setup. So if you're interested in any of these things that I've mentioned, I'm gonna link everything in the description so you can easily find it and figure out if that's a purchase you need to make for yourself. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you in figuring out which light might be best for your needs. I really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel because I am making content designed for filmmakers every single week. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Comment below, let me know what you thought about all of this. If you have any questions, I will answer them and I will see you in the next video.